All right, thanks for the shout-out. We have lots of love uh, on the chat, and thanks to everybody uh, one more time. As we get ready to rock and roll, you are now with Trader Staying Late here into the recap show. I just wanted to show up this chart right here. We're going to talk. We have CPI, we have PPI, but today at 8.30, we told everybody to chill. Chillax. It's a little bit of a move down. We got some love in the, in the, in the, in the, in the chat here. Um, but yeah, was it that bad? Microsoft, 0.7. Meta, positive. Google, 0.29. Oracle, 1. Burke, 1. We're not Amazon, 0.15. The trouble might have been in finance where we're not seeing a whole heck of a lot of green. You know, we'll talk about that as you push back the rates. Potentially economic worries, maybe, if they get this into the politics of it all? Are they gonna start to maybe cut back once November, October? Is it gonna be that late? Is it gonna be when election season's there? We had Mr. Joe Biden, President Joe Biden come out today, who's not supposed to be, mm, you know, we give Trump heck for speaking on the stock market, right? He actually self-proclaimed president of the stock market or something like that. I remember I used that as a hashtag at one point. That was hilarious um, when that was there. But Biden came out today and talked a little bit about it. Look at NVIDIA uh, down here as well, up 2%. So that's a little bit of a look at the heat map today. XLE energy continues to blast off to the upside today as well as we shout out our trade ideas lay uh, layout. XLE and uranium, the only uh, green uh, sectors today is what we're looking for. Real estate, knock, knock, doors open, but can we afford the house is the question as we wait to see what that rate decision is going to be. Um, look, we've put out some pretty good tweets here uh, today. I'm going to call out the Fed rate tool uh, just to have a quick look. CPI comes out today a little hotter than expected. 3.5 versus 3.4, giving El Problemo uh, not too long ago. May was supposed to be the start of it all. Now it is not even close. So what about June now for a rate cut? Not even close. How about July now for a rate cut? Somewhat close. 35% maybe in July. Where's that dot plot? I'm going to go find that dot plot. I think they're throwing that in the garbage right now. See what I'm saying about the Fed? Come on. Where's that puff puff pass thing? How about we go into September when the market will be a lot different than where it is right now? Why are we panicking right now um, when we're not going to get any kind of a decision of any sort of magnitude, most likely until September? I mean, we all know why. I mean, that the more you push these things out, the more uncertainty, the more we let some of this economic data come out and affect the current market conditions. So we'll have to wait to see on a little bit of a pullback. I wouldn't be investing in any real estate. Let me go over to this other um, trade ideas scanner that we've had as well. So here we go. This is what we'll look at. It looks like XLI. Are we actually positive on XLI today? No. So we're down on XLI. But I can see GE. Neil and I have talked about GE a lot uh, here on the show. 1.4% up. Great win for GE today. The industrials continue to go. Uh, Northward Grumman there. We talked, Neil highlighted Lockheed as there was some concern today about more unfortunate global unrest with Iran. Um, whether or not that pans out, the market is forward looking. You know, if anything were to happen with unfortunate missiles or loss of life, you're going to see the market react in a very severe way, not like what we saw today. So um, hopefully we can still remain positive on that. I'm liking Walmart in here as well as Walmart gets a tick up here. Look at Walmart holding in and around this $59, $60 mark as the economy continues to chug along. I mean, jobs are still strong, right? The job market's still super strong. We don't have unemployment as a worry yet. The problem becomes, everybody, when we get that nasty jobs number of like 90,000 jobs or something, way below expected, that's when we go knocking on, unfortunately, the gates of hell, because I feel like, and we'll do some calculations when that's happening, the minute the job market falls out, we already know 
Happy International Pink Day, by the way. Uh, we already know what's potentially going to happen if and when those job numbers fall on their face. We could see a nice move back in. No earnings to discuss today. Um, let, me, let me minimize this and go over. Look at Delta. We did have a good question. I want to thank you. Higher for longer. Fed pivot, possibly not. Shout out to my guy, Kevin Mendoza. Kevin Mendoza, look, do you know how much pressure you put on your boy every day? You want those bangers. You want those bangers. I hope we ain't disappointing, my guy. Um, yeah, uh, wages. Yeah, you know what? That was the other thing. Uh, as inflation goes up, real wages have also gone up. So we often say price at the pump is higher. Price at the grocery store is higher. And you can at me for this. This is, I feel this pain too, man. I'm looking for some raises. That's why we got up our share size. At the same time, though, real wages have increased just as much, if not a little more, you might not like to hear this, than inflation. So unfortunately, as we continue to get paid more, because we are a spending economy and nation, we tend to get that paycheck of five grand more a year or something like that. And, all we, and this is not for everybody. And it's not necessarily for me. I'm pretty frugal. But generally speaking, we spend more. We get a windfall, we spend. Savings, and me and Brennan talked about this on the podcast as well, savings right now are well under what people expect to have when they retire. So at some point, credit card debt, which is at all-time highs right now, is going to have to get under control. And if these rates stay higher for longer, you're not going to get the move that we want to talk about here for household income. So let's wait to see. Let's hope jobs stay high. I think they will. But what does that mean for AI names? Thank you, Finch Jane. I know not everyone's real wages. That's why I was going to say, let's not. I'm just talking about statistics. I'm not, I'm not going to talk about everybody's individual situations. OK, like, I don't know. My wage really hasn't changed, you know. Hydration Nation. I'm feeling that. I'm feeling that. I'm feeling that inflation. Get those hockey fees down. Come on, man. Come on, Bauer. Go. The one thing I'm very proud of, too, is that my daughter's made the same organization the highest level. So she doesn't have to get, like, it's blue, her, her colors. So we don't have to get new helmet, new pants, stuff like that. You know, save a little money on that. As if that's a saving grace. Bidenomics, yeah, that's hilarious. Um, OK, so as we go, that's Delta. Delta comes out with earnings today, not the greatest. The little market recap that we wrote down today was most of the Mag7 names will end up relatively flat on the day. I mean, if you take Meta up, right? So here's Meta. Let's flip this over um, into a three-minute chart. So the Q's down on the day, down that 1%. Not that bad. Uh, Meta today, Mag7 name up 0.3%. Google down 06 But that's some of that's after hours. I don't believe we were down that low. We actually looked at that before. Apple took it a little bit today, down that 1%. That was a problem. Uh, Mag7 or not, Tesla. This name's been booted out for the Mag7, but this has been a name, Tesla, that continues to find bottoms in and around 170. Let's see if it can hold that level. Um, another Mag7 name that we'll talk about, what about NVIDIA? Look, looky, looky. You guys have asked me over and over again. I've talked about this with Chris Brecher, who's going to be coming on momentarily. What names do we want to buy on dips? What name did I say? Hello, NVIDIA. I want to stay with the trend. I want to stay with what's been working. Sure, NVIDIA's gone taking it on the chin, man. It's down 14%. Where's my, how come, I got to ask Michael about this. I just flipped this and it was a daily chart. Why is it changing on both? I'll have to get this all figured out with trade ideas. Uh, but I think Michael Moss is doing bigger things right now. Uh, but there it is right now. Look at NVIDIA, but look at the RSI. Hey, where's my Epic pen? Why does it always get closed over here? I just got to keep opening this up every day. Look at what I've learned from people like Chris Brecher, people like Brian Shannon. Shout out to Brian Dam Shannon, New York Times bestseller. I keep saying that I shouldn't because I don't know if that's true or not. Maximum trading gains with anchored VWAP. Eventually, if I keep doing it, maybe. Where's this epic pen? Here it is over here. Look what I noticed, man. OK, so we're going to notice this. All right, you're starting to head down for sure. NVIDIA, down, off the top. We've got to go to the chart. Who cares about me? Uh, right here. Look at this high up here. We've talked about that 950, 960, 970. Pick your poison. We topped out, but look what else topped out. RSI baby down here. We topped out at in around 80. 
right? Now you're making that move back in. So what we can look for, let's delete this a little bit. If we're looking for some Nvidia, this is just a simple daily chart. So let's talk about simple trades, all right? We've loved 50 periods. That's coming in here at 800 bucks. I believe that's a buy. I think that's a nibble. Some of that Disney profit, let's swing it into something that I think can work. Are we aware that Nvidia could go lower? Yes, we are, okay? But if you look at when Nvidia sort of made these moves down, look where we are here, 60 on the RSI, that's this. Then we got that move back up, right? Look at some of these low points, right? Go back into here. That coincides again with the 50, right? This bottom coincides, 40s, right? We could keep going lower. The RSI could keep going lower. I'm just, let's look at past trends. You get a nice move to the upside here. We get now divergence coming back in for RSI, playing properly, so not diverging at all, but bouncing potentially off a 50 period and getting a little bit of love back down to, to its past relative strength spot. So again, if we're gonna talk about overbought and oversold, that's why we have the RSI up here. I think Nvidia is potentially a buy down at these levels. And you could say, if you like Nvidia, then why not AMD? AMD's high is something similar, 224, 225. That, this name's pulled back, man. That's $25, that's 10% back into here, then all the way down to 166. So 225 to 166, you're chopping off 60 bucks on 225 there in and around 20-ish percent, um, 20, yeah, a little bit, little bit higher than that, coming back in there. So that's a name that we could possibly look at. The problem is we are under the 50 period moving average, so we do not have that support. So what we have to look at is a possible dip by opportunity in and around 160, and look at the RSI over here. Potentially, look at this dip down, 110 into 90. That's a 10% move. RSI down into here as well. So you're getting that move into 30. This move as well, another 10% pullback. RSI stop, this move 20%. We'll see if that can get going down into here, into 166. So I feel like there's a couple good plays happening right now. So, sorry, we're supposed to be on next topic. Clip, chips on watch. The big trade that we had today that was on our sticky note, it was trade idea number one. And I don't know, Chris, I know he has China up. We'll talk about that. Look at TSM today. Man, did we nail that one. Boom, TSM, the number one trade idea today. 145, all the way back up, 146. We'll take that $1.50. We'll take $2. And then we left it alone. It is your sticky note, trade of the day. And we'll talk about that after. But if we are ready, we got to get ready to rock and roll. I do want to say a big shout out before I call Chris up. We have over 2,500 of you on YouTube. Can't believe I'm still going, man. I didn't get any sleep last night. I feel fan damn -tastic. Hmm. Don't you feel sometimes that trading, like when you have that good day, whether or not you're an athlete, whether or not you just nailed it at the gym or whatever you're doing, and you get those, what is it, endorphins or whatever it is that gets pumped into your blood and you just keep feeling that, man? I don't, I'm gonna ask Chris, we had nine for nine. We traded nine symbols today, all nine were green? What? I only feel like we should have added more shares. Let's talk to Chris about this. It's Mr. Chris. Hey Brenner. there. How are you doing today, my friend? I'm okay. We uh, messed around with the SPX many times and it uh, worked fine. What a, what a range. About that. What a range we had today there. Um, we always talk about the market often barcoding, but it means you get those up and down lines, hitting resistance, hitting some... Hitting support, hitting resistance, back and forth there a couple times today. So um, well traded, good to hear uh, from you on that one. You sent me a note. We had this, let me, let me call up uh, the chart here just to show everybody again. Let's talk a little bit about some CPI issues here. Uh, this morning, yeah. we had CPI come out 3.5. I was expecting, honestly, 3.4 or 3.3. I thought we'd come a little cooler, Chris. We did not, and we got tanked uh, there on the queues. But I told everybody, calm down. And why did we tell people that, Chris? Because we had some nice movements uh, back into 18. This is just the cues. But we've been down here before. Check a couple days ago. So often when this happens, is that what you tend to look at? You say, let's let the number settle down, get a broader look at the market, see if we've been here before, and try to find some levels to play off of. How were you guys trading that CPI number this morning? Well, the first thing, you know, I know we've talked about it a lot and I'm excited it worked, 
is that uh, if the DJCI, the Dow Jones Commodity Index, and the DBA are going straight up prior to the CPI, where the CPI is a one-month lag, I mean, it's worked every month. Every month, the CPIs run hotter than expected when the DJCI so, has gone bonkers. There you go. I don't know why everybody mm -hmm. thought the CPI would be tame. And also the Dow Jones, uh, the Agricultural Index. What, uh, um, uh, part of my um, stubbornness, DJCI, I, I'm not familiar with that product. It's just a commodity index like okay. DBC. Okay. Now, the only reason I look at it, it sounds real unscientific, is because it's so expensive, it moves a lot. Okay. So because it's we, a thousand instead of the DBC and DBA. But boy, that seemed to say, you know, uh, probably the CPI is going to run hotter than expected. And I still think the Fed is being crazy saying there's disinflation. Right. So that's... Uh, when you see that, I think that's just, that's crazy. So, you know, the mar we talked about it last week. If the markets have already factored in a bunch of cuts, if you don't have the cuts, where could the ES go? So, so we had some people in the chat talking a little bit about time frame on this um, commodity or the DBA or the DJCI. You've been talking about that it's sort of nailed this CPI number over the last numerous times. What exactly, can we break that down again? Because I, I want, I really want to have a quick look to see, are you looking at the month heading into the CPI print? Um, what, what exactly is a strong um, look for you? Does it have to be a percentage point higher? Uh, but I have the DBA up right here and we can see it has had a nice move. And on the daily, man, I mean, this has just been really skyrocketing. So if there's just, sorry to bother you again for this, but uh, people are talking on the chat. They really like these kind of trade ideas and strategies. So can we just go over that one more time, Chris? Sure. It's uh, I, I try to trade whether it's sentiment, whether it's DJCI. I like to trade extremes. Okay. And when I see the DJCI, like you see, just going bonkers. So if you look, the prior month went straight up. So that's a daily chart. And the month before went straight up. So that's why the okay. CPI is... La uh, has uh, disappointed, but it has to be a real sharp slope for it to matter to me. So what's the magic sauce on the PPI then? Um, I haven't seen the PPI really matter that much. Okay. I know on um, what I see, it just seems like input costs are going to be higher for companies, but it seems like that's sort of a non-event. The big deal is going to be the bear flag and the ES, and also the 50 moving average in a lot of different indexes. All right, um, good, good news on that one for the CPI and good news on being able to, again, identify a possible trend. And we've talked about that a lot of times on this show, Chris, and that is, is that try to trade in a way that you feel the market's going and then find an equity or an instrument that also plays nice with that. Because the minute you start thinking like, Long, short, I mean, unless you have a pairs trade on or something like that, I just like to think, okay, we're looking short today. Let's try to find something that satisfies um, that need. I don't know if that's the way you trade or not, but that's one thing that's really helped me out is to try to focus on a direction and have an idea for a stock and then just look for opportunities in that direction. Um, you know, go short Apple if I like to short. Don't look for longs, wait for pops to short. Is that something that, you, that you've been looking at? Yeah, um, especially today when you got things all over the board on the long and the short side. So it uh, doing SPX put flies, you know, at one time it looks like they're seven. The next minute they're zero. Right. The next minute they're back to seven. It'll drive you nuts. But definitely if you don't want to come in with anything and don't want to, you know, hey, maybe I'm wrong about the uh, DJCI. There was so much volatility today that you could come in with a clear head and make money on the long and short side, which is what you're talking about. Um, Chris, do you mind if we go and open up the chat for a little bit? I know you just talked about on Stock Twits, you did hours and hours of Q&A. So we'll see. We'll get um, a couple questions coming through right now uh, for you. If you don't mind, I have a topic already. Sure.
All right, I'll call it up and give you a second here. I was going to talk a little bit about China with you, but let me get to this question real quick. Gold. I mean, GLD, uh, Chris, just continues to march higher. This is from our friend Kevin Mendoza uh, right here in the chat. So your thoughts on gold skyrocketing? Um, we've, I, I've looked at an ETF like XME, uh, metals and mining ETF to possibly um, see that we are getting a little bit of a move down here um, in, in, in the spider miners right here. But GLD continues to sort of make these moves higher. I note that just for myself, we do get a little top there at 80 on the RSI with a potential pullback. Any thoughts here? Um, and then what instruments do you look at for gold? And what are your thoughts on the recent move? Well, number one, it uh, definitely you see the bull flag down here, but it wasn't that easy. Anybody, you know, it's never that easy when you get that reversal candle and you think that bull flag failed. Finished, yeah. But theoretically, it went up by that amount and that worked. But I'll show you what I think is really interesting uh, for now is all about how far they are from the 50 moving average. And as you see, I've hardly ever seen gold this far from the 50 moving yeah, average. Great point. So let me uh, let me go in here and show you. Well, that's fantastic. And you're talking about a daily. Yeah, I mean, I could show you a weekly also, but usually that doesn't mean you have it's a top, no. but it usually means you settle down for a while. So most of the times when I've tool. seen a big old rally in gold all the way back here, yeah. it's been about seven percent above the 50 moving average. All of them, right here. All about seven to eight percent. This right. time it's eleven. So that to me seems pretty extreme. And you could see the gold doing this. At least this is how it looks to me. Is number one GDX like you talked about yeah, that miners. it had a weak day. Usually the miners lead the gold. They haven't this time. Gold led the miners. Right. That's why we we're bullish on the miners, thinking you know they need to play catch up. But now after that sell off in the last two days, you wonder if gold now is gonna do this. Not a lot, but you see that little thing. If this was just NVIDIA, you'd be like, oh, that's a big reversal and it's gonna go down down a, number, a lot with that little reversal doji. So right here. Yep. So that could, it doesn't mean the end of the world in gold, but it means that this, could go all the way to here, like to about 212 and a half. Okay, so potential That's for a little- looks to me. Yeah, potential for a little bit of a pullback there um in gold and another great question i need that tool man as you can see the extension from the 50 period i think that's genius and that's a great point thanks for bringing uh that up chris and this just goes uh to your point thanks for bringing up the gdx check out this chart that we talked about this yesterday here's gold just really outperforming right now the mining companies so if you're playing a little bit of a reversion chris and i have talked sometimes about pairs trading potentially shorting gold and maybe buying the miners uh to make this up but again Look at that dispersion. We haven't seen it like that. So again, gold really outperforming some of those yeah. other names down there. And Chris, the thing that I like about the miners, and we tweeted that out too uh, the other day, at least you get some yield. If you buy some Barrick gold, which is symbol G-O-L-D. And if, if you come over here, uh, look at this for everybody. G-O-L-D still has a chance to break out. It, it's had a nice move to the upside. Grab that 4 or 5% yield, buy some Barrett gold in the miners, and then you still have um, a, a well, well move back up to the upside. If they can perform well, and again, that's going to be split adjusted, but if we zoom in just a little bit more, you're going to see up to 20 bucks, still a little bit of room left there, Chris, uh, in some of these miners. So again, yeah, RGLD, GOLD. Yep. Yep. And if you want to be in them long term, you could definitely buy them and sell some op, uh, out of the money call options against it. There we go. Collect the dividend and try to do that like every month. Another bang up uh, idea there, Chris. Thank you for all of that. And if any of you want to ask Chris any kind of questions, stock twits might be uh, the best place to find you. Um, stock twits uh, is probably the best. Or, you know, uh, if you're on our site, just ask there. I. Uh, the more okay. questions, the better on the chat, no doubt. But stock twitch, sure. I look at the notifications. I try to reply as fast as I can. I have a question for you. Did you get to see that eclipse where you were? Um, it's interesting. I was still trading. I watched it get dark. Same. But what was really cool is watching the deer come out. So yeah, because the, well, really, really cool to watch. We only had about 88% coverage. 
Okay. But uh, yeah, you started to see them come out when you never see them during see? the day. So on our podcast, really yeah, on the podcast, I was like, what about the animals, man? We're going to confuse these animals. Um, what is, uh, just a quick question here from, from a viewer, Mike Breeze wants to know, do you have a favorite options play heading into earnings season potentially? Is there something that you generally look for? Um, is there anything that you're interested in with a couple, especially with these banks coming maybe on a Friday? Is there anything that you're looking at? JP Morgan seems a little heated up here. I'm looking at 200. That seems like a potential uh, resistance level as well. Anything you're looking at maybe on an option setup for XLF or anything coming in the banking sector? Yeah, I'll tell you is, I know this sounds like I'm dodging the question, which I'm not. Uh, do you see the S&P on how far it is from the 50 moving average? I do. The red line. So it's 14%. So we were saying the S&P doesn't mean the top, but it means it should waffle around while these moving averages catch up. That's a daily. The reason I'm showing you that is on a, that was on a weekly, I'm sorry. On a daily, you're going to see the S&P is this far over the 50. Right. And the reason I'm bringing that up is the NASDAQ's at the 50. Right. The Russell at the 50. Is, under, is right at the 50. The transports are at the, uh, under, under the 50, even with Delta having good earnings. Now, the reason I'm bringing that up is the only one that's over it is the ES. So to me, if the ES is going to get there, it's probably going to need some disappointment from the JP Morgans of the world. Right. So I was looking at this kind of idea, but I'm trying to not just blindly do it uh, just to do something under the market. But if this is going to go, if the S&P is going down uh, to the moving average, which, you know, maybe the NASDAQ just rallies and invalidates any kind of bearish thing. But it sure seems like slightly under the market and JP Morgan is the way to go. But like, especially with a seven point expected move, that's pretty extreme of doing something slightly under the market. So like a 195, 190 put fly. Right. And the only reason I played the direction that way is because things might need to catch up. So that's uh, All right, so that's an idea. In answer to your question also, I'd almost rather do next week so you have some time so it's not right. just a binary event and do it wider like that. You know what, Chris? Uh, great minds think alike because that was what I was going to ask you was potentially we're a little too close uh, to earnings because you pay that premium, you know, once you get closer and closer because people like me are starting to ask people like you these questions and then everyone's flocking to the market and trying to figure out um, what the proper bid ask is on that. So good idea there heading in. Are we not worried at all, um, Chris, that when I look out here for the Fed futures and come over to my screen right here, we're not really getting any love at all. May right now, we are not getting rate cuts. That's 96% that we're getting absolutely nothing. Um, in June, we look at the rate cut potential as well. So let's go over to June. That looks like we are again getting nothing. So we're going to have to wait for July now as we get in the dog days of summer where we once again could potentially get nothing. And if these economic numbers Chris, keep going in the same way, then maybe we'll get a cut. I don't know. We'll see if the Fed cares at all about anything. But into November is when it finally looks like we get 50% chance of this. You add 50 plus the 24, and it looks like there's about a 75% chance or so that at least we get some movement into November. Um, does that change anything for you as far as potentially buying any dips in the market? Or are we just playing off the 50 period and different things like you've just been showing us? Um, I'm trying to play out the 50 period. It's interesting that usually in election years, believe it or not, like October, November, the S&P goes down. That's going back like 50 years. So that's pretty interesting. The one thing about it what was is... That stat? What was that stat? Into election years, the S&P 500 generally goes down? Uh, in October, November. October, yeah, November. I was okay. trying to get it up here for you. Um, we had... It's, uh, let me see if I have it. 
That's okay. We had discussed that on that. You are you are accurate. It, it's not true for the year. That's why I wanted to make sure. Um, oh but, yeah, I'm not talking about the year. I'm right. talking about. Let me get this up for Into you. The election. And again, you know what, Chris? That's probably just due to uncertainty, right? I mean, as you start hearing some of the major issues when they're having these debates, right? All of a sudden, China maybe looks a little more scary than it should. Um, uncertainty about job markets and who exactly is going to be in charge of the economic policy, right? I mean, that's the big thing. When President Trump. Trump came in, the next thing you knew, uh, you know, a whole new cabinet. We had what, that Scaramucci guy or something was all of a sudden um, uh, part of his, uh, was, was he the finance minister? We have ministers here. For in like 10 days. I know, but you know what I'm saying? So, okay, so you uh, have. There's your, there's your table. Okay, let's see, yep. So what are we looking at here? Since 1950, October. So we'll uh, look sorry, at August, September September. and October, I'm sorry. No, that's okay. We'll start in August. I mean, really, the market, September, October, I kind of like some of those looks there. Um, yeah, 21% was, was a bad day. It was a bad moment there. Um, yeah, so show me what we're looking at here. Well, number one is interesting on the bottom yep. of the percentage of positive or negative months. As you see, April has only been 58% positive, way on the bottom. And look at all these. That's yeah. amazing. I mean, 50-50, that's so rare compared to uh, the way overall markets. But I'm also looking at September and October doing this. And sure, that doesn't mean it's going to happen this year. But I don't know how oh, the like Fed that. cuts right before an election. I'm because that. that just seems to help Wall Street and totally destroys, you know, the idea that uh, Fed cares about Wall Street more than Main Street. So Look, I don't know about them cutting at all. I want to keep this up. That what you just showed down there of September and October being minus 0.16, minus 0.74 in the bottom right-ish or so of your screen, that, that is very, very telling. And I think that's something that all of us need to keep in mind. Data back from 1950, Chris, when you and I were on the floor trading back in 1950. And what a great year that was, uh, of Yeah, that, uh, uh, that sort of... Um... I would like to say I was a spark of my of my mother's eyes, but uh, that that's gross. So I'm not going to get into well, that. But um, uh, no, uh, we are uh, 74 years ago, Chris. Time. 74 years ago, we're not uh, we're, we're we're not there yet. All right, um, everybody can find Mr. Chris Brecher over there at Simpler Trading. Please, um, you know, send him a note. He'll answer your questions or follow him over on Stock Twits. Look, always a pleasure. Thanks for showing us that stuff about the DBA and some of those commodities heading into CPI. I'm going to mark that down. We'll talk about that on the next release a couple weeks ahead. We'll see if we're getting a feel for it, and we'll adjust accordingly. And then good luck on tomorrow, the PPI. Um, again, thanks for coming through. Uh, once again, Chris Brecher. Yeah, uh, can I give you a teaser? Uh, let me think about it. Yes. Watch that bear flag and the hourly ES. Ooh, so we are thinking about um, directionally for tomorrow morning, potentially? Yeah, that uh, arrow is the 50 moving average, and there's your your possible bear flag. Yeah, it feels like we are underneath. I, I'm, I'm going to mark that down and have potentially my bearish hat on there. Thank you for the teaser, my friend. Go have sure. yourself a Caesar. <laughs> it's Chris Brecher. I'll see you later. Thank you, my guy. All right, take care. Thanks for having me on. You guys like Caesars? I like Caesars, you know. In the States, maybe uh, Bloody Mary's is more about it here. They're not, uh, they're not spicy. Here in Canada, if you're ever up here, and I don't know if it's a Canadian thing, it might be an East Coast, it's like a clam. Um, yeah, you need the Worcester sauce. You need, you, you need the, it needs to be rimmed up top there with the salt, uh, the celery salt. But the, but the idea here is vodka. It's like a Bloody Mary, but it's not tomato juice. It's like a clam, clama, it's called clamato. Clam base, it is tasty. It is a treat. Don't have too many of those when you are trading. Look, I'm not going to go over too much more. I got to get out of here. Uh, but look, find my tweets. We, I, I mean, I'll, I'll, I'll talk about one tweet. I'm not going to go necessarily over them all here today. One that I thought was pretty uh, fun to look at. So go over to my profile. And I want to thank everybody. We're getting close, man. Let's get to that 50,000 uh, if you can. Thanks for all the love uh, in the chat today, man. We talked about that uh, and what we were doing there today. Thanks to Brian Shannon for ch uh, shouting me out and talking about bar charts. That was really cool, something that he's learned from me, uh, which is awesome. This is something that we didn't really talk about too much 
on the main show that I was going to leave for us here. And that is just inflation. Where is it? Where isn't it? Let's pull this off. Pull me off uh, a little bit here uh, so we can show this. I know this is going to be a little bit hard to see. Maybe I can zoom in. I don't know if that's changing a little bit. Maybe that's a little bit better. Okay, good. So auto insurance for some reason. This is a 12-month change. So insurance just continues to go high, high side. I know here in the GTA, everyone's getting their cars lifted. So uh, auto insurance a little bit higher. Unfortunately, the Fed can't do jack all about this kind of stuff. Rent and housing, they can sure help us with renting prices. If they can bring those debt back down with rates, but again, rent and housing, a problem. Transportation continues to go high. There's overall inflation at three and a half. But what's been good, man, rental of cars, toys are down. Airfare, we talked about with a potential miss on Delta having to potentially lower prices to have a full fleet. I don't think that's a bad thing. Appliances, furniture, these all used to be a problem because remember, it's 12 months. Appliances, furniture, and all that had supply chain issues. So that's potentially why in the last 12 months they're down because they were so elevated in the prior. I'm Sean Katina, tomorrow's PPI. Let's see if we can spin it again, man. We've had a great day. Uh, here was an epic day, actually. I want to thank everybody for joining. Go Baron, go Warren Park Eagles. I'm very, very proud of you. Let's see if my son can raise that trophy. I'll be home soon. My parents going to be there. It's going to be a great, great moment for the Katina household, even if they lose. I don't really. Uh, it's best two out of three, and they're one and oh. So no matter what, we get game three, baby. Thank you so much to everybody for watching. It's been a banger. Hit the like, hit the subscribe. Thank you, Chris, for coming through again. Chris Fretcher at Simpler Trading. Join me tomorrow. Follow me everywhere at Trader TV Sean. Often imitated, never duplicated. Go find the right one. I'm on Instagram. I'm on X. And I will see you tomorrow. Ciao.